Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from the Red Lessons channel. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about 10 other ways to experience fragrance, so stay tuned. What I mean by the title of this video and what this video is essentially about is a lot of times when we think of fragrance, especially in the YouTube fragrance community, we think about eau de colognes, eau de toilettes, eau de parfums, extract de parfum, or pure parfum. And a lot of times we overlook the other ways that we can experience scent. And scent is so omnipresent, it's so pervasive, it's pretty much in everything we do. And what really inspired and influenced this video is I was chatting with a family member who is actually allergic to fragrance, and or at least he says. And I was having a conversation with him one day, we were getting ready to go out to a restaurant, and I noticed that he wasn't wearing any fragrance, as most people don't, unfortunately. And so I approached him and I said, you know, do you wanna wear a little bit of my cologne? And he goes, no thank you, I'm allergic. And so that got me curious, and I said, you know, I don't mean to poke and prod, but when you say you're allergic, what does that mean? Like, do you break out in hives? Do you get a rash? And he goes, no, I just start sneezing. So then I wanted to ask more, and I was really delving deeper and deeper into the topic, and I said, okay, so when you light a candle, do you start sneezing? He says, no. I said, when you apply lotion, which he does, I said, when you apply lotion to your skin, do you start sneezing? He says, no. I said, when you get in your car and you have the little tree air freshener, do you start sneezing? He goes, no. So then I started thinking to myself, is it really fragrance that makes people allergic? Is it a fixative that's used in there? Is it a masking agent? Is it the alcohol that's used in there? Because I know the IFRA, or the International Fragrance Association, uh, has very strict guidelines regarding how much of a concentration certain ingredients can be used in, because that could potentially trigger an allergic reaction, whether it's topical or otherwise. So I came up with 10 other ways to experience fragrance here, and if you do take something of value from this video, please do consider subscribing at the end, wait until the end, and uh, that way you will get all of my future videos as I upload them. So let's go ahead and start things off. The first way, and possibly one of my favorite ways that I experience scent, is through the use of incense. Now, of course, there are rods, there are cones, but by far one of my favorite methods, I am Greek Orthodox and uh, I have one of these in my house. This is the Lavani method. So what you do is you have this uh, piece right here. It opens up like so. I usually like to put a piece of aluminum foil in the base so that it doesn't damage the interior of the apparatus. And you put a charcoal briquette which you can find in a lot of supermarkets, I think, and uh, I know there's a deli by my house that sells them. And also if you are in a hookah shop, so it's the same thing that's used when you're smoking hookah, I will light a charcoal briquette, I'll put it right on top of the aluminum foil, and then on top of that, I'll put incense. So I have here copal incense. Uh, this is something I purchased in my local mall at a store called East Meets West. And so I'll put the incense right on top of that and the aroma that it produces is awesome and it's so strong. But obviously if you don't like the smell of smoke then this is probably something that you want to stay away from. Another thing that I also want to mention is that this is the original fragrance. This is the original perfume. As a matter of fact, the name perfume translates to, it's a Latin word for perfumum which means through smoke. And so this was the very first perfume and a lot of times people back in the day used to take their clothes and they used to put them over the smoke and that would perfume their clothes. So this is the first method and obviously this is another type of incense that I use. This is by Blackbird and this is a cone. And so Blackbird is a company that is based out of Seattle and uh, they do have a digital presence and I actually really like the smell of these, very artistic, very perfumey, as one would say. The second way that I like to experience fragrance in my home is through candles. Now, obviously, a lot of times when we think of candles, we think of Yankee Candle or we think of Bath and Body Works. And I know I'm guilty as charged because I'll occasionally walk into a Marshalls or a TJ Maxx and I see that they have candles on sale for $4.99 or whatever. And I'll end up buying a few. And it's nice to have one in every room of the home but if you really want to step up your candle game, there are a lot of great brands out there like Sear Trudon. Uh, I have one of their candles right here. I forget what it's called. I think it might be called Napoleon. 
or uh, yeah, I really don't remember. But here's a candle. You might have seen this before. And <sighs> these candles are very, very strong. Oh, it's called Empire. Sorry about that. The name is found on the back. It's called Empire. I can't light this one anymore because my wife really doesn't like the smell. It's probably one of their strongest candles. It's very smoky. It has this culinary vibe. It has thyme. It has uh, a lot of spices in here. It has oregano. So if you imagine the top of um, Interlude Man by Amouage, that's what kind of what you're gonna get in this one. And obviously I do have a lot of other candles. Here's one that I have by Fleur and it's called Howl. And this is, uh, you know, very, it lasts a very long time. Um, candles typically do. I think it's like 80 hours or something like that. And I have one here by a Scandinavian brand called Skandinavisk. And this one is called Koto, or actually No Place Like Home, which might be the translation. I don't speak Norwegian, I'm sorry about that. And this one lasts 16 hours. And this has a very tropical, creamy, vanillic sort of a vibe. So I love using candles in my home and I have a lot of other brands as well, apart from the Marley, I have Creed, and so moving on. The next way that you can experience scent is, believe it or not, through men's body spray. And this is a company called Risen. The fragrance is called Brickle. And I've used this a few times and it's inspired by uh, a neighborhood in Miami or a community in Miami. And what I like about this kind of a body spray is that it is very lightly concentrated. It's a heavier um, smell. So it's something that's similar to Dark Temptation by Axe. It kind of smells like chocolatey. But what I like about this one is that there's no hydrofluorocarbon in it. So it's not going to smell like an aluminum can. So it's not going to have that propellant in there that allows for continuous spray. I'll show you, it's, it's a spray as any other. Just keep in mind that the longevity on this one is below average or below what you would expect from a Eau de Toilette or a Eau de Parfum. It is a body spray at the end of the day, but it's fairly inexpensive. Um, all of these things, if you're interested, I'm gonna leave links down below, but I think this is pretty cool and it actually smells really good and it is made in the USA. The fourth way that I like to experience fragrance, and I actually have to thank my friend Carlos because of this, is I have started using a beard oil. I'm actually using it right now. Uh, the one that I currently use is by Tom Ford and it's called Oud Wood. So I do have the fragrance behind me, but it's all the way up there so you can't see it. And I personally love the fragrance. The only downside is that whenever I use this, I can't really sample or enjoy any of my other fragrances because the smell is right here. And so it's right beneath my nose. So I have a, you know, it kind of overwhelms me but this is awesome. I have started using a beard oil. It gives your beard and your hair that nice luster. So if you do have a beard out there, if you're a gentleman, you have a beard, you wanna take care of it, uh, I would definitely recommend this. The smell does actually last for a long time, maybe like three hours or something. Not like the Eau de Parfum, but it's a cool thing to start using when you get into the beard game, so to speak. The other way that you can experience fragrance, this is number five on the list, is through a shower gel. I bought this from my wife at Barney's. This is Santal 33 by Le Labo. This is obviously a company that I really like. I own a lot of their offerings. And this is a really nice way to complement an eau de parfum or an eau de toilette or any sort of other smell that uh, is available in such a toiletry. So if you want to prolong the longevity or if you don't wanna put on a body spray or uh, a shower gel or a shampoo, the smell of which will eventually clash with your spray fragrance, then it's good to get something that matches. And then uh, this is a really cool option. I think this was like 50 bucks, uh, but if you use a little bit at a time, I think it can go a long way. But just keep in mind, a lot of these niche uh, body washes and stuff like that are going to typically be a bit more expensive than what you're used to. The next way that I like to experience fragrance is through the use of a reed diffuser. Now, I've been using oil diffusers for a long time. I think oil diffusers are far more effective. They don't last as long, obviously, because you have to constantly refill it and you have to put more oil in it. But this is something that is supposed to last four months. Uh, so this is a Scandinavian brand, just like the candle. It's called Skandinavisk. And they it actually comes in a box that looks like this. And you have to, quote unquote, decant it yourself. So it comes in this 300 milliliter container and this is called Haya, and it translates to go. 
and this one contains thyme and berry. It's very natural smelling, not in the sense that it's natural as opposed to synthetic, but it just conveys a feeling of nature. Uh, one tip with this as well is I like to, maybe like once a week or so, I like to take the reeds and turn them upside down. This way, whatever, it's, it's almost like refreshing the smell. And I feel like sometimes it stops working or at least I can't smell it as strongly, but this one I could smell. I stepped out of my room for a few minutes. I had something, I had to tell my wife something when I came back in here, I was able to smell it. So this is quite strong. Once again, this brand is called Scandinavis. Links for that will be down below as well. The next way that I like to experience fragrance is obviously through the use of a lotion. Now, <laughs> when I found out that Bath & Body Works was discontinuing mahogany woods, I stocked up on these. So I actually have a few of these. And this is another way to prolong the longevity of your fragrance, but also uh, use a toiletry that matches your eau de toilette. So mahogany woods, great smell. And I think I mentioned this in videos before that it kind of conveys niche quality. It's not something that I um, would expect to smell on the designer market. Now, if you want to go for something that's a little bit lighter, you can always use a hand cream. I find that a hand cream, as opposed to a lotion, uh, does a better job of moisturizing your skin, uh, but that's neither here nor there. So this next one might surprise a few people. Um, maybe, maybe it doesn't. Hairspray. So if you are a fan of 1821 Sweet Tobacco Spirits, uh, they actually have a hairspray that you can use. And this is something that I've used once or twice. I actually do use hair gel, uh, but I will use a hairspray if I'm wearing this fragrance. It's kind of like the cherry on top or the hairspray on top. And um, yeah, it actually does smell like the fragrance. I don't know why I sprayed it, but there you go. The second to last way that I like to experience fragrance other than eau de toilette, eau de cologne, eau de parfum, or otherwise, is through accessories. Now, I know by Killian has their own accessories that you can wear. Parfum de Marley, believe it or not, has accessories. They have cufflinks and everything. Uh, this brand is called Venacci. And Venacci is, it's basically this bracelet. You might have seen it. I've been wearing it for some time now. And I've had this for about a year now. So whenever uh, you purchase one of these, it comes with a certificate of authenticity. It's gonna take me a while to find it now and it has a born on date on the inside. And mine says August 31st of 2017. So I've had this for almost a year now. And the way that you use this is you take, uh, you take the bracelet itself, you invert it. You're not supposed to be wearing it, but I personally don't mind. And you're supposed to spray what they call the lock stone, which is this thing here. And the scent, what I've noticed when I spray it here is people are more likely to smell it on you because you gesticulate and I think that that creates these generous wafts of the fragrance. But the other thing that I really like about this too is that if you have a fragrance that is very top heavy, I feel like the top notes are sustained a lot better when you spray it on here because although it is next to your skin and your skin and your body is what generates that heat, I feel like it lasts a lot better on this. What the brand recommends that you do is that you don't wear it when you spray it. So you take it off, you perhaps hold it like this, you invert it, you spray it, you wait five minutes until the scent is spread throughout the entire lock stone and then you put it on. But the way that I see it is you spray fragrance on your skin anyway, so I just invert it, I spray it on my skin, I turn it back around and then I'm good to go. But that company is called Venacci and I don't know if it's still valid, but they do have a coupon code that came on the inside of my box and it's called Made You Look all one word, made you look. So if you use that coupon code, you can get 10% off and it's actually really cool. I enjoy wearing it. And the last way that you can experience scent, and this is probably the more sophisticated of everything that I have here, is through, this is a company called Parfumique. And I've actually been playing around with this for a little bit, but I haven't really made my own fragrance. So for those of you that don't know what this is, is you go online, you pick your favorite olfactory classifications. And these are fragrances made by Anne-Sophie Behagel, who is uh, the perfumer that made fragrances for Room 1015, for Menbito Rosa, very talented perfumer. And I picked six different, no, one, two, three, yeah, six different olfactory classifications. So I have queer, which is leather, shipra, which is cypress. I have pudra, it's a little powdery. And they give you scent strips, they give you samples, 
they give you a uh, means by which you can decant it and also a it looks like a 30 ml bottle and you can sort of mix and match and play around with your own fragrances i personally really really enjoy this i had a lot of fun with it it comes with this uh, booklet on the inside and the booklet i believe gives you some formulas that you can use uh it's in french unfortunately but they do give you a page where you can record uh yeah they do give you formulas and of course, if you want to modify it, you want to play around with your own, you can record your own formulas in there just in case you ever want to recreate that blend. And I think it's really cool. And it gives people, it's a bit sophomoric depending, you know, compared to the way that, um, you know, real perfumers do it. Obviously, this one is done by drop. It's not really done by weight because you need a scale to do it in the very sophisticated way. And of course, I don't have... Uh, quite extensive knowledge of chemistry. So it takes something that's seemingly very complicated and difficult, and it is difficult, and it simplifies it in a way that the average consumer can sort of be proud and say that they made their own fragrance, which in reality is a fragrance or fragrances made by an accomplished perfumer already. So once again, it's called Parfumique, and links for this will be down below as well. So there you have it, everybody. These have been 10 ways to experience scent other than Eau de Toilette, Eau de Cologne, Eau de Parfum. And I do apologize for the video running a bit long, but I wanted to be as comprehensive as possible. And like I said towards the beginning of the video, if you did take something of value from this video, I really would appreciate your subscription. So definitely make sure to subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe button down below. And also, if you are not new to this channel, but you want to start receiving my notifications for these videos more frequently, uh, click on the little bell that's next to the subscribe button this way when I do upload a video you will get that push notification sent straight to your phone so you don't miss content like this in the future thank you so much for watching I appreciate you guys I love you guys I'll see you in the next episode bye